Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we welcome back a friend of the channel, regular guest Brian from Sentiment Analytics. How are you, Brian? Great catching up with you, Alex. Doing well. Markets, despite correcting the day we're recording this video, have still been on a, a nice little midterm rally that I think a lot of people have been happy with. Yeah, it kind of feels like we're just waiting for the next uh, f bullish phase of this cycle after having six months correcting. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what data you've got for us today in terms of what the whales are doing and what you're seeing. So um, if you want to share screen down the bottom and get into it all, let's uh, have a look. Absolutely. Let's jump in. Beautiful. All right. So obviously over the past 30 days, things are looking great. Uh, we have some projects like Sui that have more than doubled BitTensor as well. Um, a lot of meme coins. I, I, know, I know that we've kind of seen a bit of a correction, but overall meme coins have still been on one heck of a run. Shiba Inu over here up 30%. Whiff up a monster 63%. Uh, Dogecoin over here in the corner up 15, which is kind of middle of the road for most altcoins. But you can see pretty clearly it's been a sea of green over the past 30 days. And in spite of that, Alex, what's interesting is the social volume for most assets, especially the top caps, as we go from left to right, these are going largest to smallest in market cap, mostly less talk over the past 30 days compared to what we had been seeing earlier in the summer months of J June, July, and August. So interesting correlation where prices go up, talks about crypto go down. Uh, and that's not really a coincidence. That tends to be how things go, where people get disinterested, the retail traders jump out because they're tired of markets being choppy. And then all of a sudden we see this big rally to, uh, to get them interested once again. Would you say that's a a side effect from or symptom of um, a retail being less dominant this cycle, and it's more that mature money and ETF flows? Yes, and it's it's kind of a healthy sign if Bitcoin is going up, but the talk and that is going down. Would you agree with all that? Or a hundred percent. Yeah, I was speaking with a, a Korean trader who has a, a pretty established channel himself, and he was talking about how because of the economic conditions of the world right now and the the affordability issues that so many people have, the amount of spare money going around that actually can be injected into crypto is pretty is pretty sparse compared to the 2021 rally and the 2017 rallies, yeah. uh, which I know you were around for as well. So um, it, it's a different world out there. Obviously, institutionals are getting more and more of the uh, pieces of the pie of not just Bitcoin, but most assets out there they they hold a higher proportion meaning they hold more and more power and are able to dictate where prices go next so the yeah. whales more than ever are really puppeteering these price waves fantastic all right what have you got next for us brian yeah so we obviously can look at transaction volume and stuff like that i'll, I'll breeze through this just to say things are looking pretty healthy overall for Bitcoin's blockchain and, and overall network circulation. Uh, MVRV is a little on the high side. So this indicates that in terms of all of the addresses that exist on Bitcoin's network, they are up an average of 3% among those that have been active in the past 30 days. We ideally want to see addresses down in the negatives. You're, you want to be buying into other people's pain because crypto is still a zero-sum game like everything else out there. The 365-day wallets are up an average of about 7.5%. So both are up mildly, which means we're at a little more risk than usual if you're looking at a combination of the short and the long term. Uh, but it's certainly not in like a scary position like we were back here in May or even going back to the all-time high, which is just before I start this chart here. Those are the times where it's just like a clear top is coming. You really would be wise to sell your bags. Right now, it's just showing, you know, if if you're holding on to your bags or even buying more right now, you're doing so during a slightly mathematically more risky time than usual. So I want to point that out because we've been on such a rally in September. You know, it's no surprise that you're going to see numbers like that. Yeah, everything needs to take a breather and there's always going to be traders taking profits and, and whatnot. So um, 
all still perfectly healthy in the big scheme of things. Exactly. Yeah. And I mentioned Wales. Uh, they are still moving in the right direction. If we just look at the past six months, since March 26th until now, they have accumulated a total of about 63.5K Bitcoin. That is pretty substantial. Um, it's uh, indicative of those institutionals who are controlling the markets more than ever, continuing to feel confident despite these choppy green bars here representing the prices over the past six months. I'd call that a pretty good sign. Now, ideally, we'd love to see if Tether and USD coin were starting to go up instead of down. But right now, it's pretty clear that those whales are flipping the stables that are represented by these blue and red lines for more Bitcoin. And for you, that this is one of the most important metrics to watch what, what whales are doing? 100%. Yeah, this yeah. is probably the first thing I'm checking every day um, when I'm seeing if there's any anomalies going on. And unless you start to see them moving down or even get flat, uh, it's it's generally pretty good for the long-term prospects of Bitcoin and the overall crypto markets. When they turn down like that, though, uh, it's no coincidence that you see that this coincides with a lot of tops. You mm. saw it move down here, price immediately goes down. You see it go down here, you have maybe a week to react to one more little climb up, and then it just collapses. Yeah. So it's pretty typical how that goes, but right now we're not really seeing a risk of that. Fantastic. All right, next up. Yeah, so I think maybe this is a good time for us to go into the DeFi sector. Uh, you and I were talking before this call about stacks, and I I'm actually very interested. Maybe you can recap what's going on with their project right now and the significance of it. Yes, the Stacks Nakamoto upgrade um, in its final stages now. I think the plan is to go live uh, in a week from now with fast blocks. So taking the the block transaction time from 10 minutes down to five seconds. So if you're using stacks and trying to get involved with Bitcoin DeFi at the moment, a lot of the time it'll take three or four confirmations to confirm. So that can be 30 or 40 minutes or more. So once we get that down to five seconds and it makes Bitcoin DeFi a lot cleaner, quicker, easier to use, cheaper for everyone, um, I think that can be one of the catalysts for, for this cycle for sure. So it's probably fair to say that Stacks itself would have some upside there, assuming the utility goes up because of this upgrade. Yeah, and you look at it in terms of its market cap and um, the the ratio to Bitcoin and all that potential value that can be unlocked and put to work to get yield or borrow stable coins against. Yeah, I think it's a pretty simple narrative. If it all goes well and clean, it's, it's the first time Bitcoin is going to have a, a really quality um, layer two um, working for people to get involved with, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just checking out a few of our data points on Stacks, and it's it seems to be pretty middle of the road in terms of trading volume, so perhaps people are waiting for the actual upgrade to be implemented before they begin to go wild with its trading. But I will say the social volume has been moving in the right direction. This is the past, uh, looks like, yeah, this, this is the past three months of discussion rates of stacks and you can see pretty clearly they were getting talked about very little in late July and two months later they're probably about double the amount of discussions so the crowd is aware of this but they're also not showing a level of euphoria that would give me concern that stacks might see some big retrace because there's so much FOMO and like a potential buy the rumor sell the news type of situation yeah cool Awesome. Thanks for that. Absolutely. Now, besides that, um, I wanted to point out this. Uh, I find this quite interesting. This is just looking at, oh, that skewed the data. Let me just look at the past month. So this is looking at the, the top six market caps for layer ones, layer twos, meme coins, and then AI and big data. Um, and clearly, there's a cutoff point for AI and big data back here, but I wouldn't pay much attention to that anyways. The point I wanted to make is meme coins have seen a huge ascension in interest rates. And very, very commonly, this historically aligns with tops because the crowd starts to lose focus of the big layer ones and twos that drive markets and get more into the speculative assets. And that very often foreshadows local tops in the markets due to the greed that is starting to pop its ugly head up. 
Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we saw over the past couple of days when we saw this minor correction. Certainly, we're still on a good path, but we need to see this meme coin interest relative to layer one and layer two interest start to drop off a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm still pretty bullish on meme coins, um, but I think they need to evolve a bit. And Vitalik's written papers on this rather than just people coming up with cool names and images. I think it's got to have like a a theme or a cultural movement or a message tied to it and people really feel like they're part of a community more than just price go up and that's a funny name kind of thing. So I think there can yeah. almost be a way to bring about social good and, and, and other things, but um, an experimental space that I think can mature and, be, and become more important in, in the crypto space this cycle. That's really well said. And I think we, we I think it's sentiment can also be pretty bullish on meme coins during most portions of the year. Uh, the problem is sometimes I think people's focus is uh, meme coins pump first and then Bitcoin can pump second when the reality is it's almost always the other way around. You see Bitcoin pump first and then those profits redistrib redistribute into memes and other things that are more on the speculative side. So if you're a trader that's on the you know swing trading type of interval, you're going to do best when you're trading into meme coins after we see a big run up, especially like a week ago. This is when meme coins were really taking off because Bitcoin had just blasted off. But now that Bitcoin's corrected, if you're trying to buy the dip with meme coins, be a little careful there uh, because that would be an anomaly if we suddenly do see Doge and Shiba and Whiff going nuts while Bitcoin is struggling to stay above 60K. So yeah. Just a little strategy pointer uh, that that we've kind of uh, honed in on after seeing so many of these cycles play out the way they have. That's an important point for sure. Now, besides that, you know, there's still a very tight correlation between the S and P and Bitcoin, or just equities markets in general, no matter which market you're following around the world. And you can see just how much all three of these lines have climbed. The, the gold one, of course, is the price of gold. Teal is S&P 500. And then green is Bitcoin. Um, and for the most part, you've seen all three of them just have huge ascensions this year. But I want to remind everyone that Bitcoin is still kind of trading a little like a, like a high leverage tech stock. I know it's kind of a meme that people throw out on, on social media, but there's actually some truth to it. You know, yeah. it... it seems to be following along with how uh, economies are fluctuating right now. And it's been that way since early 2022 when the U.S. Fed started to uh, rise those interest rates to make up for the COVID um, bubble that we had gone into with markets just going nuts up to that point. So yeah. it's an interesting time. And ideally, we want to see Bitcoin move in its own path without any reliance on the S&P. Some people think it, it should be like an inverse. I disagree with that. I think it's literally just equities is in that corner and crypto is in this corner and they don't care about each other. That's when we start to see Bitcoin go on its biggest bull rallies historically. Yeah, I think when you've had such significant uh, rise in interest rates and then people anticipating the first cut um, you know, all the assets on screen here in the trillions of market cap. So to some degree, they're going to behave similarly in terms of what global liquidity and interest rates are doing. And then as we get further into a cycle or interest rates settle down, people start to look for the other narratives or fundamental drivers that might drive one more than the other and so on. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And this is just a, a social volume measurement of any keywords on social media that had Fed or rates or Powell in them. Yeah. And you can see Quite clearly, there's a lot of direction changers whenever these social volume uh, keywords spike, the latest being on September 18th, and there was an immediate correction from that. So keep in mind how sensitive the crowd is. And like you said, their anticipation for rate cuts or rate rises often calls the top or bottom before the actual news is official. Uh, this latest rate cut was like an 85% probability we were hearing all the time in the U.S. And sure enough, that 85% became 100%. And people celebrated, but they were kind of scratching their head when they saw that Bitcoin was 
running out of steam even on that good news. So yeah. it, it's kind of a classic by the rumor, sell the news scenario. Yeah, for sure. What do you got next for us, Brian? Yeah, let's see a few other things here. Uh, just looking at trending coins right now, typically anything that's in the top three historically has an average of a 12% drop for each of these assets after they hit the top three. The reason is because they're usually hitting the top three because of price ascensions like this. The red lines here represent price and people are talking about DIA because of its price ascension. So if you're looking for local top signals, this is one of the best. You may not have been following DIA, uh, but now you are maybe because of the fact that it's pumped so much. And the crowd being this euphoric about it, driving it to be the number one trending topic. We're not the ones making it trending. This mm. is simply reporting on the assets seeing the largest percentage rises in discussion compared to normal. Yeah. So this, to me, if you're looking to FOMO into something, tells me DIA is not it, uh, at least not yet. You want to wait for the crowd to settle down on it, just like you want to wait for them to settle down on Bitcoin in general and the overall crypto markets because they've been getting very positive. Um, so DIA would be one to avoid. Uh, Casper is up there as well that seems to have been pumping. And then Nexo is actually trending for a different reason. If I open up our AI summary, which is basically just a, uh, a paragraph of explanation as to why people are talking about it so much, um, it says users are seeking guidance on various functionalities of their Nex Nexo accounts, including withdrawals, deposits, and account closures, um, and then compliance with regulations. So this looks like a lot of bearish sentiment going on. And in my opinion, that would actually cause the opposite impact, where people are probably selling off and fudding out of Nexo, making it a potential buy candidate. Maybe not necessarily right when this video is released, mm -hmm. but there will be a point where social volume here in blue gets really, really high as the crowd gets aware of this issue. And then you would be buying into others' pain as they're panicking and jumping out. I like it. Good use of the tools. FTT, interestingly, at number four, by the way, I find that fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of talk about FTX payouts still and, and those dates. Um, you know, people talking about maybe relaunching FTX 2.0. I haven't seen anything just just that's going to happen or whatnot. But um, what what do you think the reasons are for that token being messaged? I think you're exactly right. It's all about payouts and speculation on when they're going to get it. The FTX 2.0 stuff is just mind boggling to me. I don't know why people would want that. Uh, maybe it's more of a meme than something that's realistic, but you never yeah. know. Yeah, cool. All right, moving on. Yeah, I mean, the last thing I think I can close with here would probably be the uh, total holders. I'm going to pull up the top caps. This is one of my favorite things that I like to check out. So what we're looking at here are a few different top cap assets and their amount of total wallets that are not empty. So basically, any wallet that has more than zero coins in them, uh, this is a raw count over the past three months of how they're going. In fact, I'll go back longer. Let's go back a full year and really get into this. Bitcoin here, you'll notice when it's going down, I'm going to literally hide everything else for a minute so you can look at this red line here. When this line is going down, you'll notice often Bitcoin goes on a run. That's because retail traders are jumping out and they're saying, I don't want to be a part of this. Bitcoin looks like it topped out here, so I'm just going to get out while I can. And then all of a sudden they kick themselves because they see Bitcoin going on a 30% mid-sized surge. Yep. Uh, and it's not always a perfect science. Like You can see that price was going down here as addresses were going down. But for the most part, what you really just want to avoid is seeing like a huge surge in while it's being created because that's a sign that the crowd is FOMOing in and there's just a lot more uh, empty wallets that are becoming full of coins. Yep. Now, with other addresses like Ethereum, it's a pretty tough metric to gauge because there's so many DeFi and staking uh, sort of use cases for Ethereum that there's just constantly more uh, Ethereum wallets being created all the time. 
In fact, they've got 128.6 million wallets versus Bitcoin has having 54.4. So it's got maybe two and a half times uh, what Bitcoin has in terms of non-empty wallets. That that might come as a shock to a lot of people. I, I think it plays into that Bitcoin narrative of mine, just the potential for growth of, of Bitcoin DeFi when you, when you look at it like that as well and possibly yeah. how, how that's going to change that metric to become more like that ETH metric for you guys when you're analyzing it as oh, well. Yeah. yeah, Yeah, that could definitely flip things on its head in a hurry. And I also uh, want to point out Tether here um, yeah. going pretty pretty ballistic in terms of just growing in terms of non-empty wallets. I'd say that's a good sign because for stable coins, you want to see more and more wallets being created. That, if anything, it's a sign that people are jumping out of you know some top caps and just liquidating and, and waiting on the sidelines with stables again. Um, any insights on XRP? Is that one a bit harder to gauge or? Yeah, let's take a look. I think it's kind of like Ethereum. I mean, they, they're constantly minting more coins, uh, from my understanding. If we look at their uh, supply breakdown, which is a good way to analyze this further, we'll just take a look at balance of addresses for XRP, and we'll break it down. Let's see, the price is sitting at a little over 60 cents right now. So if we just look at something like the 1 million or more tier by itself for a minute. You can see all these moments where they're minting more coins. These, this, is, this is not them like getting more coins from retails. This yeah. is just more coins being, being minted. Um, so it's constantly going up. I'll overlay price on it to see if we can find a quick correlation. Yeah, I mean, there's a few. So like you see this drop, for instance, let me make it a tiny bit brighter. There we go. So this drop was interesting right here. I think for the most part, unless you're seeing XRP suddenly see a big drop like this, uh, it's it's generally fine that XRP is getting more and more non-empty wallets over time. Uh, and over the past year, at least, it, it looks pretty good. So I'm not too worried about XRP. I'm just zooming out to the last four years. And this was interesting. So we saw it drop over time right up until the end of 2022, which was just a brutal year for all of crypto. And then it just completely reversed course. And it's been growing uh, massively over the past, call it 19, 20 months or so. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I know a lot of people are still bullish on that and they're talking about the quantum financial system possibly coming in and that type of thing. So that's uh, interesting to note there. Any, um, totally. any final metrics or the thoughts you want to share with us, Brian? As always, I'll put all the links below to follow your guys' work or sign up if they want more of your analytics and research. I think we hit a good point here uh, where we covered a lot. Um, I do want to make sure people understand that markets are really being driven by two things, and it's going to be these two things for the indefinite future. It's going to be what whales and sharks are doing with their coins, and prices are going to go the same direction as what they're doing. And then their prices are going to go the opposite direction of how the crowd is perceiving markets at any given time. Yeah. Over the past three weeks, we went from being kind of bearish to very bullish. And as soon as we got very bullish, we started to see prices top out. Now that we are seeing a very mild retrace, I would not be surprised if the sentiment shifts back over to a little bit neutral or bearish. And if it does, a chart like this will tell you everything you need to know. Are people getting euphoric or getting overly scared? And sometimes we don't know until we get there and like how big of a drop it's going to be. Okay. Sometimes people are optimistic and just say, okay, I'm going to buy the dip. I'm not worried at all. But sometimes they get genuinely worried. Like if it coincides with, you know, some huge Ukraine, Russia news or Palestine, Israel news, there can be a lot of reasons where people just flip on a dime in terms of their sentiment or some big influencer says something that resonates with people and people just shift. Yeah. So, I would keep a close eye on this. Bitcoin is looking neutral so far this week. Um, but by the time we talk next, maybe in a month or so, I, I could see 
I could see people getting either very euphoric if we're reaching that all-time high level once again, or they get really negative if we are, you know, sub 60K when um, you and I are, are talking markets once again. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'll stop screen share there, Brian, but as always, really appreciate those insights and uh, we'll have to do this again next month. Perfect, brother. Yeah, it felt like we had a good good back and forth and that was probably, what, 20 minutes, 25? Yeah, I think it was just perfect. I think everyone at home will enjoy that. So, yeah, cheers. Excellent. Yeah, man. All right, well, 